There's a house in Wilmington, North Carolina, at the address 1406 Orange Street, to be exact. That's the home of a museum in the midst of a renovation, which is fitting, actually, considering the legacy of one of the stories they tell here is also under construction. You see, children come to this house to learn about the history of the game and the pioneers who forever changed it. They come to learn that history isn't just something you inherit, but something you can shape yourself. Arthur Ashe won the national amateur title, and now he's trying to win the Open. There are two legends at the center of this history, two legends who, for all they shared, couldn't have lived two more different tales. The phenomenon who first blazed the trail, the citizen of the world who followed her soon after. All these years later, the legacies of Althea Gibson and Arthur Ashe have diverged, but the next generation can still determine for themselves what history writes from here. There are a lot of reasons why almost 80 years after Althea Gibson broke tennis's color barrier, she's not nearly as well remembered as Arthur Ashe, the icon who followed in her footsteps a generation later. And if you want to understand why that is, you really have to go back to before either of them were born, to the early 1900s, when like so many other organizations, the United States Lawn Tennis Association was exclusively white. Back in the day, it was the USLTA, and that was also code for whiter than white, white, white. <laughs> and I'm not just talking about the clothes. And so in 1916, African-American players formed their own group, the ATA, the American Tennis Association. Blacks who wanted to play tennis had trouble finding out where the other blacks were who liked tennis. It was a feeling of, oh, am I the only one? Are we the only ones, let's say, in Harlem who want to play? The whole vision of the ATA was kind of like a gathering place for black individuals to have a good time, to socialize, and to play some very serious tennis. Within the African-American community, they had everything. Restaurants, their own hotels, their own sporting organizations. So there was really not the need, in a sense, to want to be part of the white organization. However, in order to play against the best in the world, you were going to have to go outside of your neighborhood. Like everywhere else it existed in America, segregation in tennis was going to reach its breaking point at some time or another. The question was when that would come, and who would be the player to break the barrier? The answer was just about as unlikely a story as you could imagine. The Althea Gibson story is the greatest story in sport. It is a story of somebody who was born the daughter of a sharecropper, who was part of the Great Migration, who grew up in the ghetto, who dominated a sport that was not made for her. She was poor, she was black, and she was a woman. And that is not tennis. Yet in 1957, she became the queen of the world. The tenacious Iron D faces a stiff test on the road when Birmingham battles Atlanta. Tomorrow at 4 on CBS Sports Network. Where are you? Well, the squirrels are back in the attic. Mom? Your dad won't call an exterminator. Can I call you back? Mom? He says it's personal this time. If you're a mom, you call at the worst time. It's what you do. If you want to save 15% or more on car insurance, you switch to GEICO. It's what you do. Where are you? It's very loud there. Are you taking a Zumba class? It's absolute confidence in 30,000 precision parts. Or it isn't. It's inspected by Mercedes-Benz factory trained technicians. Or it isn't. It's backed by an unlimited mileage warranty. Or it isn't. For those who never settle, it's either Mercedes-Benz certified pre-owned, or it isn't. 
The Mercedes-Benz Certified Pre-Owned Sales Event, now through February 28th. Only at your authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer. Today's Best Western? What does that mean? This is going to be the best day of my life. Today's Best Western? Over 4,200 hotels worldwide and a variety of hotel brands. It's vibrant. A feel of home and a friendly hello. All with a refined glow. And with rewards points that never expire, you get free nights fast. Wow. Now stay two separate times and get a free night. Book now at bestwestern.com. I've scored some pretty good deals on Poshmark, like the Bread Air Jordan 1. This is my favorite sneaker of all time. So I was able to find a pair of really easily without spending a crazy amount of money. Get $5 off your first order. Download the free Poshmark app now and use offer code LOVEPOSH. T-Mobile is always happy to see you. When you join T-Mobile, you get two lines of Unlimited with two of the latest phones included for just 100 bucks a month. Expectations are sky high. The atmosphere is sure to be electric. Well, here we go. We're on the way. So check it. Dynamite. How deep. We can beat you in a lot of ways. What a move that was. That's what a slam. Woo. Leaving it all out there. That's great college basketball. Yeah. Althea grew up in South Carolina, her family moved to Harlem. They happened to live on 143rd Street between 6th and 7th Avenues, which was a designated play street during the summer. Althea and a friend of hers found paddle tennis, and basically they started playing that in the street on 143rd Street, and people noticed that Althea was pretty good at it. That was the beginning of Althea Gibson's remarkable rise as a young tennis player. Soon she was winning Junior American Tennis Association tournaments and was discovered by Walter Johnson and Hubert Eaton, a pair of physicians hugely influential in African American youth tennis in the 1930s and 40s. In 1946, they brought the 19-year-old Gibson South to train in Wilmington, North Carolina and Lynchburg, Virginia, looking to harness her talent and refine her approach. It was very clear that Althea was going to be something special. Now, whether or not they could hone her into an acceptable model was another issue. But watching her play, oh my goodness. You know, tall, long, just a tremendous athlete and the physical strength. Oh, it was incredible. Tennis at that time was a game where you were expected to be really refined in your behavior and your manners, and that wasn't Althea Gibson. So she had to be taught these things. You wouldn't want someone like Althea yelling or breaking her racket because then white folks might say, see, that's why we don't invite them here. Althea was someone who didn't think much about school. She loved to hang around pool halls and bowling alleys with people older and um, she was comfortable in that atmosphere. If you hit the ball into her court, she would kick it away and not return it over to the person, which was something that they had to train her to do. There may have been concerns about how Althea presented herself, but those were soon dwarfed by the evidence of her dominance. In 1947, she began a remarkable run of 10 straight ATA championships. But Johnson and Eaton, the two physicians, had bigger aspirations in mind. Because black players weren't allowed to play in local tournaments and improve themselves, they weren't able to play at that next level. And they realized that she had the potential to play uh, with some of the best players in the country. I think what they saw was this can be our Jackie Robinson of tennis. And it's important that we bring up the name Jackie Robinson because 1947 is the same year that Jackie Robinson breaks the color barrier in Major League Baseball. Jackie Robinson's debut with the Dodgers would prove to be one of the most significant moments in the post-war period in America. And three years later, another color line would be crossed thanks in large part to an open letter written by tennis legend Alice Marble. If Althea Gibson represents a challenge to the present crop of women players, Marble wrote, it's only fair that they should meet that challenge on the courts where tennis is played. Soon after, an historic invitation came. 
on August 25, 1950, in Forest Hills, New York. The tennis world watched with curiosity, as did African Americans across the country, including a seven-year-old boy in Richmond, Virginia, named Arthur Ashe. Althea Gibson walked into a side court at the U.S. Nationals, the top amateur championship in the country, and made history. She had broken the barrier. Now the door was open for people to step through and follow her. She proved that anything could be done and all things are possible. She did it under circumstances that were just impossible, not even challenging. Not, that's not even the word. The word is impossible, and she really achieved the impossible. Althea beat Barbara Knapp that day in straight sets, almost making it look easy. But in the months and years ahead, her journey through the world of elite amateur tennis would be much more challenging. Think about all the baggage that she had to carry walking into that court, being called any name that people wanted to, and have to not hear it, just block it out. I was in tournaments where, you know, if there's two black players and a hundred other white players, how do the two black players end up playing each other? to knock each other out. That's me. So imagine what Althea went through. She would come back and tell me how the girls treated her, how they wouldn't practice with her. She couldn't even find a doubles partner at Wimbledon. It wasn't popular because the players barely spoke to her. I mean, it was pretty hard going. Althea often felt lonely on the road in those early years. She would often have to change in the car, would have to have her meals in the car. And it's hard to play your best tennis when you have this feeling that I'm not welcome here. It took her a while to really find her groove. Want to save money on pet food and supplies? Shop online at Chewy.com. When I shop at Chewy.com, I know I'm getting an amazing deal on my pet's food. I save on my dog's food, their treats, their toys. At Chewy.com, you'll always find low prices on your favorite brands. Plus, you get fast, free, one to two day shipping. Prices are important to me because I have four dogs and Chewy saves me money. I just found my dog's food for less than what I buy it in the store. I love Chewy.com. Save 30% on your first order and get fast, free, one to two day shipping. Start saving today at Chewy.com. Coors Light is made with barley, water, hop extract, and corn syrup. That light is made with barley, rice, water, hops, and no corn syrup. Good to know. There's something for everyone at Golden Corral. Let's talk about their wings. Get them sweet, spicy, even boneless. Get as much as you want for one low price. It's Wingfest for a limited time, only at Golden Corral. Just got an alert from Monster for a great job. Might be out of here soon. <laughs> Let me know when that happens. Let me know when that happens. You brought your own car with your own insurance. Thanks, Steph. No more driving that old hand-me-down. Surprise! Surprise! No, I'm not gonna get a date in this. We had a lot of great dates in this car. <laughs> Ugh, no, no, ew. When it's time to sell your home, there's a lot of money on the line. How can you trust your real estate agent will get it right? There's good news. With Homelight, you can compare actual performance data on thousands of agents near you, so you know who sells quickly, who sells for the best price. We'll match you with the perfect agent for your needs. Best of all, it's free. Sell your home for more money. Go to homelight.com today. Are you getting the most out of your Medicare plan? Many people with Medicare are eligible for plans that include extra benefits in addition to those found in original Medicare. Benefits like dental, vision, and prescription drug coverage. In many areas, plans with benefits are available with $0 monthly premiums or $0 deductibles. Call now. The consultation is free and there's no obligation to enroll. Call 1-800-558-7165. That's 1-800-558-7165. Expectations are sky high. 
the atmosphere is sure to be electric. So check it. Well, here we go. We're underway. Nice pass. What a move that was. He can beat you in a lot of ways. Dynamite. How deep. Whoa. Whoa. That's going to slam. Woo. Leaving it all out there. Whoa, what a shot. That's great college basketball. Yeah. Every step forward in the first several years of Althea Gibson's climb through the sport's white establishment was hard fought and hard earned. Even as she was winning tournaments, progress was tempered by frustration, as amateurism prevented her from earning money, and she pondered quitting several times. But then in 1956 came a breakthrough, a win at the French Championship, making her the first player of color to capture a major title. And the very next year, she won an even more storied event. When Althea won Wimbledon in 1957, it was a major news story. Wimbledon was the biggest tournament in the world, and the Wimbledon champion received global attention. And for a black woman to win that, it became a major deal. You have to understand that Wimbledon was the crown jewel, and probably still is, in tennis today. She was a national hero. I mean, how many people have gone and met the queen, <laughs> been presented an award by the queen? I don't know if there's been another African-American woman who's had a ticker tape parade. So when you saw the masses of all different colors, complexions, all out there cheering for her, you knew she was a huge deal. Being a, a, a black woman, being this community project, having to have that pressure on her, it was a tremendous amount to, to bear. And then to be able to come out on top, I mean, it's huge. I would have never thought that coming from the streets of New York, playing paddle tennis, that I would be one who would have the opportunity to shake the hand of Queen Elizabeth. To me, that is a great honor. Althea also won the U.S. Nationals later in 1956, and then repeated as champion in both tournaments the next year. Combined with her doubles victories, she'd earned 11 major championships, all in a three-year span. Now, shoulder to shoulder with the first generation of stars to integrate baseball, she'd become a hero for African Americans everywhere. And yet, she was not eager to become the face of a movement beginning to take shape. She was once asked by a reporter, do you like being compared to Jackie Robinson? And she basically said, I don't compare myself to anybody. She said, I'm basically only concerned about me. That's not the kind of quote that's going over well when black people are getting their heads beaten in, having water hoses turned on them, having attack dogs sicked on them. She would always say, like, I'm not trained as a freedom fighter. I'm trained as a tennis player. If she broke a barrier, that was her play, speaking for itself. But she didn't want to be called on to do that outside the court, to be this kind of huge mouthpiece for all these civil rights causes. We don't ask folks who are, are, are mechanics or, or lawyers to necessarily speak out on behalf of the entire African-American people. You couldn't necessarily just be free to be a tennis player. You were also a black tennis player. You were also representing your race. So if something happened, they're gonna come ask you, like, I don't represent all black people. I don't know. Did you find in, in, in getting to the top of the tennis world that you had any real great obstacles because of, of your race? No, I don't, I don't think that uh, there were any obstacles as far as race was concerned. I think they treated me uh, as a tennis player and accordingly. Uh, I, I, I had no discomfort. She wasn't that outspoken person. She didn't really have that message. And if she did, there was probably a fear because she was a woman and she wouldn't be heard. You were taking a risk if you spoke up and you spoke too loudly. She would have probably been immediately cut off, sat down and sent home. As a girl, you just know it's different for you. Your road, your road's going to be different. And if you're a girl that's black, it's going to be very hard. You know, she would just say, champ, I'm just tired. She said, but I can't stop. I've got to make this. 
She said, because I got to make it for you guys. Her speaking out was with what she achieved. And what she achieved was what no one else did or had to or could. And that was more than enough. In less than a decade, Althea Gibson had gone from outcast to arguably the greatest women's tennis player in the world. And while she might not have been comfortable speaking out beyond that, there was a teenage star in Jim Crow, Virginia, who would soon confidently and gracefully stride into that role. Oh, brewers of Miller Lite, we received your corn syrup by mistake. That's not our corn syrup. We received our shipment this morning. Try the Coors Light Castle. Ah. Coors Light Castle, guys. Bud Light, brewed with no corn syrup. If Old Spice sweat difference helps keep me feeling dry, how would they know I worked hard? I've got to make stuff harder. <laughs> there, that's hard. The final whistle was just the start of an epic weekend away. Book your flights, hotel, and car on Expedia and travel like a champion, Expedia. Want to know Brazil's deepest secret? It's in the deep clean level where we face deep stains to prove Brazil goes even deeper for an exceptional deep clean. And what's your deepest secret? Keep it clean, Rhonda. Brazil Pro Clean. Your resume shows that you have a lot of experience. Yes, mostly driving a bulldozer. For seven years now. Seven and a half, actually. What makes DiGiorno crispy pan pizza different than delivery? Pan, 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 pan. Pan, 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 pan. You bake it fresh in its own pan, giving our DiGiorno pizza a crispy, caramelized crust. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. When we moved, we didn't have anything, so we used OfferUp. It's a free app where you can find awesome things people nearby are selling. It was a great way to furnish our home and get to know our new city. Now we have furniture and friends. OfferUp is free to use. Find anything you want nearby. Selling on Poshmark is crazy simple. All you have to do is post a picture, up, add a description, add a price, and you're pretty much good to go. Right now I'm selling Air Jordans and Nikes and Adidas, anything really performance related or style related. Download the free Poshmark app now. T-Mobile is always happy to see you. When you join T-Mobile, you get two lines of Unlimited with two of the latest phones included for just 100 bucks a month. Neutro. Non-GMO ingredients, no artificial flavors. All the energy dogs need and nothing they don't. Neutro. Feed clean. Arthur was downtown with our mother one time, and he was about five years old. They got on the bus. They got behind the yellow line on the bus, which was the determination of where people of color would sit and what have you. And there were no more seats. So Arthur, being Arthur, asked an elderly white man to get up so his mother could sit down. The man said to Arthur, if you have the guts to ask me to do that, then I'll let your mother sit down. And he got up. We knew prejudices. Uh, we grew up with them. Well, we were born on a playground. Arthur could walk out the front door or the side door, take 20 steps, and he could hit a tennis ball. When Arthur was 12 years old, I was eight. I said, you know, why do you play tennis? And he said to me, I want to be the Jackie Robinson of tennis. Do you have the feeling that you may be carrying in the importance of your race with you onto the court? Oh, yes, definitely so. Uh, I feel it, although I don't want to feel it. But it's there, so uh, I have to act accordingly. Born and raised in Richmond, Virginia, Arthur Ashe was 16 years younger than Althea Gibson. But in the 1950s, as a young high school tennis star, 
Arthur came under the watch of the same two doctors who'd nurtured Althea's career, Walter Johnson and Hubert Eaton. He won a number of major junior national tournaments, earning a tennis scholarship to UCLA, where he won national championships in both singles and doubles, and at the age of 20, became the first African-American player ever selected for the United States Davis Cup team. By 1968, the dawn of the sports open era, Arthur was the top amateur player in the world. And in the first US Open to feature professionals, he rose against everyone else in the field. Arthur Ashe now serving again. Six, one and a half, about 148 pounds. Human whip. I was there in 68. I'll never forget that last ball and the elation and the relief. It was an incredible moment. Got it. Everything just stopped. 1968 was the height of the civil rights movement. There were so many bad things that were happening in America at that time for people of color. And then you have Arthur being this champion that people could actually revere and applaud and, and look up to and thank for kind of taking some of the pressure off of the people of color. After he won the Open, he said to me, I'm a champion now. People will listen. I will have a few things that I need to say. It turned him from a curiosity to a celebrity. So a week after he won the tournament, he becomes the first athlete ever to be on the, the new show, Face the Nation. It has been said that the accomplishments of black athletes, which are in greater measure than their proportion of the population, advance the cause of the whole black community. Do you really think that's true? I don't think it's wholly true. I think it's partly true uh, as it applies to uh, spe specific uh, ways in which uh, black athletes can use their influence and their power to uh, uh, wield uh, tools that will affect progress. This is somebody who saw the opportunity to do the right thing and felt compelled to do it. You know, he was brilliant, he was measured, he was experienced, he was world-traveled. He could speak to a lot of issues, to a lot of people. Arthur was a resource for the black community. Many people reached out to him to help them in whatever their cause was. Using his voice came as naturally to Arthur as hitting a forehand. And as his success on the court continued, the causes he spoke out for ranged from racial segregation to economic empowerment. But it was an injustice far from home that truly transformed him into a global voice against prejudice, apartheid in South Africa. His campaign against the policy began when the nation first denied him a visa to play in a tournament there on grounds of his skin color in 1969. My contention is you have to start somewhere, and uh, it, it would at least be a crack in that apartheid wall down there if I did play. The moment that he can't get into South Africa to play, it changes him from just a civil rights activist to a human rights activist. And there's only a few athletes who will be able to touch that. Really, it's him, it's Ali. He was getting a lot of letters and calls from people saying, don't play South Africa, you know, your Uncle Tom, if you, you know, all kinds of things would, were being done. People sympathetic to, to this cause have tried everything possible to get South Africa to recognize that what they're doing is, is morally wrong, uh, legally wrong, spiritually wrong. He was strongly anti-apartheid, but he believed at that point that engagement was preferable uh, to isolation. It was ludicrous to him that Nelson Mandela spent 27 years in jail because he wanted to vote in the country where he was born. It took four years, but Arthur finally got his visa in 1973. He made it to the final of the South African Open before falling to his longtime rival, Jimmy Connors. But the loss hardly diminished the impact and meaning of his visit. I probably knew uh, about as much about this place as anybody who had never been here, so I'm glad to be given the opportunity to come down and see for myself what the situation. It was incredible 
how those people in South Africa reacted to him playing and getting that visa and coming there the first time and being able to sit at a tennis match and watch another person of color playing the game of tennis in South Africa. He wanted young athletes to see that what you do outside of the lines can often mean so much more to you than what you did inside the lines. of Coors Light. Your corn syrup was delivered to us by mistake. Oh, there it is. And just in time, we were running low. Thank you. You're welcome. Bud Light, brewed with no corn syrup. There's something for everyone at Golden Corral. Let's talk about their wings. Get them sweet, spicy, even boneless. Get as much as you want for one low price. It's Wing Fest for a limited time, only at Golden Corral. I've scored some pretty good deals on Poshmark, like the Bread Air Jordan 1. This is my favorite sneaker of all time. I was able to find a pair really easily without spending a crazy amount of money. Get $5 off your first order. Download the free Poshmark app now and use offer code LOVEPOSH. When my son needed a car, we used OfferUp. I was able to browse the cars my neighbors were selling and find one we both agreed on. So now I just need to worry about sharing the road with this guy. <laughs> Get the app and find what you want right where you are. What makes DiGiorno Crispy Pan Pizza different than delivery? Pan, 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 pan. Pan, 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 pan. You bake it fresh in its own pan, giving our DiGiorno Pizza a crispy, caramelized crust. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Hey, what are you doing up there? I'm applying for a new job with the Monster Mobile app. You won't be seeing me much longer. Right. Reese's eggs are back, and we hit them somewhere you'll never find. Psych! We put them everywhere. Grocery stores and supermarkets, gas stations and chiropractor's offices, bowling alleys and grocery stores, which we already mentioned. Not sorry, Reese's. The final whistle was just the start of an epic weekend away. Book your flights, hotel, and car on Expedia, and travel like a champion, Expedia. Want to know Brazil's deepest secret? It's in the deep clean level, where we face deep stains to prove Brazil goes even deeper for an exceptional deep clean. And what's your deepest secret? Keep it clean, Rhonda. Brazil Pro Clean. Free. 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 That's right. TurboTax Free is free. Free. Free, free, free. Arthur Ashe's breakthrough win at the 1968 U.S. Open came just as the tournament was opened to professionals, a development that had come far too late for Althea Gibson. I love the sport very much, and I, I don't think that I will ever uh, give it up or, or devote too much time away from it because it, it's been a part of my life. Althea's passion for the sport had always been counterbalanced by her inability to earn money as an amateur. Her struggles were so significant that in 1958, at the very peak of her prime, as the world's top-ranked player, she walked away from the game, unable to support herself. Her decision to leave the game was purely a financial one. Uh, I think she would have stayed on a lot, a long time, if she'd have got money like you can today. It was an amateur sport. At the time, only the top men could get under-the-table payments. They couldn't take endorsements. They couldn't profit off of themselves in certain ways. She never got a racket named after her, sports shoes named after her. The contracts with uh, advertisements never came Althea's way. I mean, she was starving. I mean, she couldn't even pay her bills after a certain point in her life. I mean, she was doing anything that she could to survive and to take care of herself. Leaving tennis behind was not a guarantee to solve her problems. For all her success, the reality was she'd never found her way into the public's heart. Tennis was ladylike, and you were very demure, and that just was not her demeanor. 
She also had a certain style that wasn't built around a particular, a typical femininity. And so I think that that invited a lot of curiosity about her sexuality. She was a woman, but she looked like a young man. People thought she was a young man. She was tall, lean, and she used to play in a vest and shorts. You know, we're jocks, we're athletes. Talk about our accomplishments, don't talk about my looks. It's pathetic. They see a 5'11 woman with an aggressive style of play, as Althea Gibson had, and they think that that is somehow monstrous or beastly. She was very uh, masculine and carried herself that way on the court, too. And I think that intimidated some people. How do you think you'd uh, make out against one of the ranking male tennis players, Miss Gibson? That's unfair. Well, I just <laughs> wonder, do you think you could uh, you think you'd get a couple of games against one of the Australians? Well, I dare not say because there's so many male in the house. You mean uh, you could, might... though? <laughs> <laughs> you're a champion, you're a woman of color. We don't want that. Right? And if there's any other perception they may have about you that they might see in a negative light, be it true or not, that's just another reason to not want you, to not include you. Althea's ventures after tennis included singing, acting, and even holding tennis demonstrations at Harlem Globetrotter games. But ultimately, she landed in another sport dominated by whites, looking to break barriers all over again. Golf and tennis are two of the whitest sports in the United States, and now you're integrating both of them? The amount of talent you had to have in order to succeed at that is ridiculous. Now, Althea was the best known player, or the best known person on the tour, because she was a world-ranked athlete. However, she was also the worst treated person on that tour because she was black. Oftentimes, Gibson would be refused invitations to dinners or um, even to change in the clubhouse. She would put her shoes on in the parking lot. And these are just small digs that happen every single time she would show up somewhere. She was 37 when she joined the Ladies Professional Golf Tour in 1964 and is the only athlete to break the color barrier in two sports. But racism wouldn't be the only challenge. She also had to contend with a game she'd picked up only a few years earlier. Althea played in more than 100 LPGA tournaments and did not win any. Her best result in any LPGA event was a second place finish in Columbus, Ohio. She just didn't make that much money. She couldn't support herself financially. She just found that golf wasn't going to be the financial answer. So life after tennis was hardly a fairy tale for Althea Gibson and a marriage to William Darbin, the brother of an old friend at the ATA circuit, would end in divorce after 11 years. But as she struggled to find happiness, her successor as the African-American face of tennis continued his remarkable story. Arthur Ashe would never come close to Althea's 11 majors, but in 1975, Arthur made an unexpected run to the Wimbledon final where he'd attempt to become the first African-American to win the championship since Althea 18 years before against his old rival, Jimmy Connors. He had not beaten Connors before. In fact, he'd been smoked by him many times. And he and some friends the night before decided on a strategy to beat Connors. But it was totally contrary to Arthur's style of play. All of a sudden, he started chipping and hitting soft shots, rushing the net. We said, oh, he's playing ATA tennis. I've never seen Arthur so focused. I wonder if Connor's lost his head a bit there. Another unforced error. He played him to a tee. Jimmy was beside himself. Two championship points for Arthur Ashe. When he won, how he turned to his box and he gave the fist. Um, it's like an iconic photo, which was like, yeah, OK, I did it. Basically evoked an image of the 1968 Mexico City Olympics for me. 
the famous scene on the podium with John Carlos and Tommy Smith and the Black Power salute. In that instance, I think he deserved to show all the emotion he wanted to, considering all that he had accomplished. I would like to think, when I look back on that, that championship was meant to be. You know, I think there was something divine going on in that moment for a black man to win a tennis tournament on the biggest stage was so significant, which is why here we are and we're still talking about that victory. You still stressed about buying our first house, sweetie? Yeah, I thought doing some hibachi grilling would help take my mind off it all. Maybe you could relieve some stress by calling Geico for help with our homeowner's insurance. Geico helps with homeowner's insurance? They sure do. And they could save us a bundle of money, too. I'm calling Geico right now. Cell phone. It's ringing. Get to know Geico and see how much you could save on homeowners and condo insurance. Sarah, up ticket. Find the cat. Make it rain. It's on. Change the music. When I move, you move. Use the rocket. If only everything in life listened to you like your new A class. Hey, Mercedes. How can I help you? Change color. Make it cooler. Play my music. The A class, starting at thirty-two thousand five hundred. Today's best western. What does that mean? Today's best western. Over forty-two hundred hotels worldwide and a variety of hotel brands. It's vibrant, a feel of home, and a friendly hello, all with a refined glow. And with rewards points that never expire, you get free nights fast. Wow. Now stay two separate times and get a free night. Book now at bestwestern.com. Coors Light is made with barley, water, hop extract, and corn syrup. Corn syrup. Bud Light is made with barley, rice, water, hops, and no corn syrup. No corn syrup. If Old Spice sweat difference helps keep me feeling dry. How would they know I worked hard? I've got to make stuff harder. There, that's hard. Selling on Poshmark is crazy simple. All you have to do is post a picture up, add a description, add a price, and you're pretty much good to go. Right now I'm selling Air Jordans and Nikes and Adidas, anything really performance related or style related. Download the free Poshmark app now. The final whistle was just the start of an epic weekend away. Book your flights, hotel, and car on Expedia and travel like a champion, Expedia. After a nearly two-decade career and five major titles, Arthur Ashe retired from professional tennis in 1980 at the age of 36. But he stayed visible in the sport and many other places with his activism. He also battled health issues that had first surfaced with a heart attack in 1979, and through the course of those struggles, a blood transfusion infected him with the HIV virus. I have known since the time of my brain operation in September 1988 that I have AIDS. I'm feeling very optimistic about uh, being able to get on with my life in as normal a way as possible. As usual, he dealt with it intellectually. He realized the bright side for mankind, and he lent his voice to it. AIDS patients are not to be pitied. None of us want pity. We do want compassion. We do want understanding. Uh, life is going to be difficult enough as it is without uh, people um, engaging in acts of violence against us. As he said, getting AIDS changed my whole life because I knew then I was on a short time limit. 
just a few months before he died, he was arrested outside the White House as part of a protest rally in support of Haitians seeking asylum in the United States. So Arthur never stopped. He lived such an exemplary life. Arthur passed away from AIDS-related pneumonia in February of 1993. Thousands came to his funeral in Richmond. When he dies, it's more like a head of state die. I've never seen such a reaction, you know, to, a, to an athlete, really. The first African-American ever to be laid at state in Richmond, Virginia, and the respect that that man was getting, it was an incredible day. Althea Gibson's last 10, 12 years of her life were quite different than obviously Arthur Ashe's. She saw her life having been at a pinnacle that was as great as could be expected. But through the years and things did not work out the way that she wanted to, she became a bit depressed. The tragedy about Althea Gibson's career is that people forgot about Althea Gibson. Late 50s, she's up there with the Jackie Robson and Joe Lewis. She is the face of black America, and then, you know, people forget about her. I was in Florida at the time, and she came on the line, and I was delighted to hear from her. What's happening? I'm going to kill myself, Angela. I said, I beg your pardon. I've got no money to live. I can't pay the rent, I can't buy medication, I can't even buy food. There's nothing left. Angela Buxton responded to that 1992 phone call from Althea by writing an open letter to the tennis community asking for support. Donations poured in, saving Althea from poverty, although she remained reclusive for the last years of her life. It was so sad to see someone who opened the door for so many, and not just in sports, to have a life come to an end where she didn't, it was almost like she didn't matter. Althea passed away in 2003. Her funeral was attended largely by close friends and family. And she was buried next to her ex-husband in a grave without her own headstone. In Queens, New York, you'll find the Billie Jean King National Tennis Center, site of the U.S. Open. And it's here that the two African-American pioneers of tennis are recognized in very different ways. The stadium bearing Arthur Ashe's name rises 200 feet from the ground, the largest tennis venue in the world. While the only tribute you'll find to Althea is a three-foot plaque alongside all the other champions. We don't know Althea Gibson outside of the context of black and white footage and photographs. And I think the distance that time allows helps us, unfortunately, to forget a great champion a little bit more. Althea was around when there was no great television. There was no big prize money. When Arthur was around, the game was growing by leaps and bounds because we finally had television. We finally got colored TV. We just knew more and saw more of Arthur Ashe. Pretty much that entire time, Althea was invisible. There were also the very different ways they ascended to the spotlight. Arthur's willingness to fight for change versus Althea's reticence to join the fray. He was passionate about social justice, embraced his status as a role model in the black community, and for that, he was embraced. If Althea Gibson would have been an activist, right, that would have been huge, right? Because those are the ones who we, we tend to remember the most. Her battle was internal. Arthur's reach was to include everybody. He coined the phrase, you know, citizen of the world, and he was definitely a citizen of the world. You cannot ignore the fact of gender when you consider how Althea Gibson has been remembered, how her legacy has been passed along. 
frankly, uh, America didn't want to see us and they didn't want to see black women in particular. Women's sports at that time was not publicized as much uh, as it should have been and they're still not publicized as much as they should be. The times were even tougher for her in the 50s as an African-American female. And she really didn't get to reap the rewards from her successes. Come on, she integrated two sports. What male has integrated two sports? Tired of lugging around big bags of pet food and litter? Get it delivered. Chewy.com delivers everything your pets need right to your door. They ship all your favorite brands of dog food, cat food, litter, toys, and treats. All at amazing prices. Plus, you get fast, free shipping. <laughs> With Chewy.com, you don't have to break a sweat or the bank. Save 30% on your first order and get fast, free shipping. Shop online at Chewy.com. What is that? Uh, mine. Why? It's just that it's... Lavender? Yes, it is. It's for men. But I like the smell of it. <laughs> what makes DiGiorno Crispy Pan Pizza different than delivery? Pan, 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 pan. Pan, 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 pan. You bake it fresh in its own pan, giving our DiGiorno Pizza a crispy, caramelized crust. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Selling your house is hard. From prep to open houses to hoping for offers. But what if you could sell your house in just a few days with no hassle? Now you can with Simple Sale from Homelight. Just answer a few quick questions about your house. We'll collect offers from our network of cash buyers and introduce you to the highest bidder. Now, selling is simple. To see your Simple Sale price, go to homelight.com slash simple today. They said a bottle was just a bottle. That no one would ever notice me. But I knew I could be more. That one day, I would make people smile. so loud you can't hear them anymore. The cowboy safety is provided by a few good men. His fist full of rope is the only bond between man and beast. Those eight seconds go by mighty quick in the house of PBR. Fourteen oh six Orange Street in Wilmington, North Carolina, was the home of Hubert Eaton, and where Dr. Eaton brought both Althea Gibson and Arthur Ashe to train when they were rising young stars. More than half a century later, Lenny Simpson, who once played here alongside Althea, now runs a nonprofit that utilizes the house to teach young people the game. It is very special to be on that property, on that historic, iconic property with some incredible, great players, Train, Arthur Ashe, Fred Perry, Althea Gibson, so many others. Even as the house undergoes renovation, the programs teach the students the stories of the legends who once played here. A few years ago, they learned about the woman who broke tennis's color barrier and then got lost in the folds and wrinkles of history. So they set out to change that. They wrote letters to the USTA and its president, Katrina Adams, who happens to be an African-American woman who'd followed in Althea's footsteps. They asked why Althea Gibson wasn't honored at the National Tennis Center alongside Arthur Ashe. Dear Miss Katrina Adams, I believe the great Althea Gibson deserves a statue in the U.S. of the I think that not having something named after Althea Gibson does not make any sense to me. Something to remember her by because she was the first African-American 
woman to play in the U.S. Open. And winning until skills can no longer be denied. In 1951, she became the first African American. For a lady to that has been through a lot as a child and had to face racial barriers and also broke them, the name Althea Gibson should never be forgotten. I think that a memorial to Althea is a start. And we should all know more about her outside of tennis. She made all things possible. She understood her role was to break down barriers so that those of us that came after could reap the benefits. I'm glad to see the uh, ladies in the professional tennis uh, make the kind of decent living that they can make through, uh, you know, through their efforts. Uh, I've always said, even when I was playing amateur tennis, that uh, I look forward to the day that uh, the women, particularly, will be able to make a decent living. Arthur Ashe could not have been as vocal as he was had it not been for Althea Gibson's example on the court. Because without her example on the court, does Arthur Ashe get the same opportunities? Arthur talked about Althea a lot. He saw how Althea had to smile through adversity. He learned from the way that she dealt with it. In these times, 1968, it's really a mandate that you do something. You, you just cannot sit by and let the world go by. I believe he felt like his life would have been somewhat of a failure if people only knew him as a tennis player. He had a mission, not only to play tennis, but to impact the world, and he did it. Arthur was not the greatest tennis player of all time. Um, no one will argue that his stats would show that, but he may have been the greatest human that played our sport. They meant everything, not only to their race, but they meant everything to their country, and they helped change the world. And as for the world of tennis, their imprint remains profound as well through the African-American stars who've followed in their footsteps and thrived on the biggest stages. There are still challenges today. There's still adversity. Uh, there's still bias. But I think Arthur and Althea knocked the doors down and opened those doors of opportunity. The champion of the 2001 United States Open, Venus Williams. Your 2014 U.S. Open champion, Serena Williams. It's nice now to see Venus and Serena have broken so many barriers, but it all started with Althea and Arthur. Althea and Arthur make me proud to be me. We need it those role models. We needed those moments of hope to be able to see others doing well when so many were oppressed. The 2017 U.S. Women's Singles Champion, Sloan Stevens. In my daughter's lifetime, and she's 23, she is always known an African-American champion. Yeah, the things that Arthur, you know, overcome and, and, and did, uh, you know, definitely made it an easier road for me. There's no, uh, yeah, you know, looking at this guy's black and this guy's white. It's just, you know, two, two tennis players. Every generation should know about Althea Gibson, just like they should know about Arthur Ashe and what they went through for all of us to celebrate them and to learn from them so the younger ones can shape the future. It was important to them that kids on the playgrounds were introduced to tennis. And tennis was used as a vehicle towards a better life. As different as they were, as differently as they looked at the world, if they were still here, they'd both be happy to see kids who look like them playing on these courts. They're the next chapter in the story that began with Althea Gibson and Arthur Ashe, not to mention proof their legacy is thriving. Two pioneers who transformed a game and who should both be remembered by everyone who's followed them since. <laughs>